Just interesting, we have uh, connections with some people live down south of Fresno, California. And they have a salt problem. It's an old seabed in the San Joaquin Valley. Just really, really flat ground, and they just flood irrigate it. But they have a lot of salt problems, and so they're growing barley, and they're growing cotton, because that's the two crops they can grow in that area, simply because of the high salt content in the soil. Well, they figured out that they could go ahead and leach that salt, and leach it into drain ditches along the sides of the fields, and move that water down and drain it back into the, the uh, Bay Area by San Francisco. The San Joaquin drains north up that way. Well, they did that, and uh, they ran into a few problems. Yes? Well, the question is, what if you hit a hard pan? Well, where are the salts going to stop? They're going to stop right at the hard pan. You bet. So that becomes a real problem. Unless that water moves sideways at that hard pan, if there's a hydraulic gradient downhill on that hard pan, she can get it off to the edge of the field and pick it up in a drain ditch. But if it's a flat field and you hit a hard pan, you're going to live with that salt. There's no way to get rid of it. Yeah, so you got a real problem then. Is there anything that grows out there in the Great Salt Lake? Well, not really. Uh, well, commercially, you know, we're looking at what can grow in salt, and there are no commercial crops that are going to do that. So. So it's uh, you know we'd like we'd love to right. yeah we'd love to irrigate with the uh, ocean water but you know fresh water only makes up one percent of all the water in the world that's available to us over ninety five percent of all the water is ocean water and then you got the icebergs and the and the glaciers and s some other waters out there that are not very accessible. So we're very limited on what's available to us, and so we use what we got. Yeah, well, the, uh, the leached water in this area down there south of Fresno was going into underground drains. They were putting it into ditches, moving it out of the field, and sending it into the uh, Bay Area. A little problem, they were also leaching out selenium. And selenium is a heavy metal, and the fish were e ingesting selenium through the microorganisms that were picking it up. Then the birds were eating the fish that had all this selenium in them. And then when the birds laid their eggs, uh, no, no live birds came out of it because they were all deformed and the shells would crack and break open and all kinds of bad things were happening. And so they found out what the problem was with this high selenium level. It was poisoning all the birds. So they had to quit putting that drain water into, back into effectively the ocean. And so now what they do in that area is they pump it into great big evaporation ponds. And so when you fly over that country, you'll see these great big ponds, huge ponds, 10, 15, 20 acre ponds. Look down on there, they've lined them with plastic and they pump the drain water into there and then they let the water evaporate and all the salt and selenium are just piling up in the bottom of those ponds. And so it's a way to get it out of the fields and so they just have basically these waste areas throughout the, the, the region that are evaporation ponds and it, and it works pretty effectively and it gets the selenium out and the salt out and it's not killing the birds and the fish and all of that good stuff. So now are they able to grow almost whatever crop? Well, as they leach more of the impurities, the question is, are they able to grow other crops? As they leach more of the impurities out of that ground, more and more crops become available to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you do that just uh, once in the off season or repeatedly? Generally speaking, the leaching process occurs in the off season because during the growing season, you're applying chemicals that you do not want to leach. So you don't dare be leaching during the growing season. But the question that I'm thinking is, does the leaching occur with a one-time application or in a situation uh, like that, or are they doing it multiple times? The question, does the leaching occur in a one-time or a multiple-time application? It could be done either way, actually. Depending on the system. Yeah, it depends on the type of system they're running. and. 
how they manage it. You could just put down a continuous large amount of water over a period of time and do it all in one shot. If the soil can handle the load and you're set up to operate that way. That'd be the easiest way because you're not having to move it field to field to field or area to area to area in the field as well. And in that country it's almost all flood. So they move up, they just flood a big zone. It's really interesting that the pumps are basically D7 cats, but uh, that's the power source and then they run them on tracks and, and they have a big PTO pump on them. And they're moving 20, 30, 40 cubic feet per second out of a great big huge canal and just absolutely inundating a field with water. And the fields are like 20 acres at a clatter. They're bordered on the edges with little dikes. And so they're flooding this big quarter mile wide by, I don't know, 400 foot wide or something like that field. And they just dump the water in at super high rates for long enough to put the water down six inches a foot, foot and a half, however much they want to put on that field for that period of time. What do you do with the waste that's left over? It also, the question is what happens to the waste? It all soaks in. They just bear, they just have the t total field encircled <coughs> in, a, in a levee and all the water eventually just soaks in and they laser level them dead flat. Doesn't the fields are absolute pancakes. Doesn't that create compaction problems? Uh, question is, does it create compaction problems? Not really, because the water is not being pounded on the soil. It's just flowing across it. It flows. It, you would think that it would just rush across like a flood, but it does, and it moves pretty slow as it fills into that field. It's, it's something to be seen. It's really quite an operation when this great big huge amount of water hits this field. They have to dump it as it goes into the field. They have to put out a very large tarp for it to s spread on. Otherwise, they'd have a big erosion problem right where it hit the field. But it goes onto this big tarp, plastic tarp, that spread out, oh gosh, in their, this case, there were at least 40 by 40 foot square that it was landing on and then it would just kind of fan out off of that big tarp area and just start moving across that field. And it, no real erosion occurs and it, there's no Drop, raindrop effect to pound the ground at all, and it just soaks in. It just literally soaks in. So it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating.